So our first speaker presenting and competing for the Ken Farmer Scholarship is a second year Master of Health Science student in cardiovascular perfusion at Quinnipiac University. She originally hails from Boston, Massachusetts with a background in preclinical surgical research at Boston Children's Hospital. Now, postgraduately, she'll be beginning her perfusion career in pediatrics at Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. So please join with me in welcoming Madeline Warmer, presenting her research, Postoperative Effects and Attenuation of Circulatory Inflammation Mediators by Modified Ultrafiltration in Adult and Pediatric Patient Populations. And this is a meta-analysis. Please join with me in welcoming Madeline. She might have hit her video button instead of her mute yeah, so um, and bring your video back on. Thanks. Research in post-operative effects and attenuation of circulating inflammatory mediators by modified ultrafiltration in adult and pediatric patient populations. Hey, Madeline, you want to hit your video so we can see you too? Yeah, let me see if I can make that work. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll let me do that. If you can see the, if you can see the window of yourself, it should be like there's like a pause button there. Mm, it's just not saying available. Hmm. That's all right. <laughs> Might be a setting issue on my my part. Okay. All right. Let's see. You can go ahead and start all over if you want to. Okay. That's all right here. I'll get on to the next slide. Sure. All right. The process of modified ultrafiltration, or MUF, was first described by Nike et al. in 1991. And this description of MUF was first applied in children as a means to more satisfactorily reverse the effects of hemodilution for the purposes of cardiopulmonary bypass or CPB, which resulted in a rise in total body water with deleterious post-operative effects. Today, MUF uh, post-CPB is a controversial practice in pediatric cardiac surgery and is rarely used in adult cardiac surgery, but overall is thought to reduce reverse the therapeutic hemodilution and remove some pro-inflammatory mediators resulting in reduced post-operative complications and mortality. So MUF evolved from the technique of conventional ultrafiltration, a commonplace technique during CPB initially employed during the 80s for management of volume overload and hemodilution. This technique employs a hemoconcentrator device in line with the CPB circuit as a pressure sensitive filtration mechanism. Application of a pressure drop across from the device forces plasma water and small solutes like potassium ions and inflammatory mediators into the hollow fibers of the device and out of the circuit into a collection system. Additional mechanisms of ultrafiltration have been developed, such as zero balance ultrafiltration, which utilizes conventional ultrafiltration procedures with volume replacement of normal saline, usually to create a pH balanced blood volume while using the hemoconcentrator to remove inflammatory mediators and potassium from the plasma while on cardiopulmonary bypass. Today, MUF is regularly employed in cardiac surgery patients in an arteriovenous or a venovenous fashion, utilizing a cardioplegic delivery system with a positive pressure pump and or the patient's own native cardiac output. Many studies have evaluated the biological and chemical changes that result from post-CPV MUF in pediatric patients, and specifically interleukin-6, interleukin-1, interleukin-8, and tumor necrosis factor alpha have been found to act as pro-inflammatory mediators that are removed via the ultrafiltrate and have been well-studied biomarkers in the benefits MUF provides in pediatric patients. While adult applications of MUF are fewer, um, a study in 2000 by Grunfeld et al. found that MUF in adult patients also significantly reduced cytokines, such as IL-6, IL-8, TNF-alpha, and IL-2. Also adhesion molecules, which have been demonstrated to en injure endothelial cells. 
The study, however, was unable to demonstrate any significant difference in post-operative morbidity and mortality from patients that experienced MUF post-CPB and those that did not. It's thought that other beneficial effects of post-CPB MUF are also related to increased hematocrit and attenuation of SIRS by reducing those inflammatory mediators, thus reducing edema and inflammation and their effects such as lap leaky capillary syndrome, decreased lung compliance, increased chest tube drainage, and overall increased incidence of morbidity and mortality. Despite the kinetically assisted nature of traditional inline MUF setup, the procedure ultimately relies on the patient's own native cardiac function and blood volume. Because of this, there's a risk that improper initiation of MUF could result in exsanguination of the patient's blood volume into the CPV reservoir or disturbance in cardiac function due to the displacement of a large amount of total blood volume. These risks are primarily associated with perfusionist error, which could result from improper clamp placement, especially during um, an arterial veno MUF. MUF procedures do also inherently expose the patient to an extracorporeal circuit um, and thus inherits the risks such as thrombus formation. Um, so perfusions must be vigilant in assessing the patient's ultralight, um, patient's electrolytes as well uh, before, during, and after the procedure because of its removal of electrolytes and small sol solutes in plasma um, that could affect the patient's overall status. So this study hypothesized that post-CPV MUF reduces IL-6, IL-8, tumor necrosis factor alpha, all in the blood, and increases hematocrit, which provides advantages of reduced inflammatory response, decreased chest tube drainage, reduction coagulopathies, and decreased blood transfusion requirements in both pediatric and adult, health, adult patients. However, the increased susceptibility of the pediatric population results in decreased mortality and morbidity when MUF is applied, whereas no change is found when it is applied in adult patients despite consistent reductions in chest tube drainage, blood transfusion requirements, and reduction in inflammatory mediators. The proven benefits of MUF in neonatal infant and pediatric populations undergoing cardiac surgery with cardiopulmonary bypass are thought to be due to the group's increased susceptibility to fluid overload, pulmonary injury, and higher hematocrit requirements. While the advantages in adult patients of MUF are less clear. The effects of the procedure post-CPV are similar in both groups. So the goal of this study was to compare and contrast both pediatric and adult populations that received post-CPV MUF to patients in both groups that did not receive post-CPV MUF. So a literature review was conducted via the Quinnipiac University Netter Library Network, uh, employing search engines such as ScienceDirect, Google Scholar, PubMed, NCBI, AMSECT, and Perfusion.com. And searches consider, consisted of randomized research studies, case control studies, retrospective studies, meta-analyses, procedural aspects, historical considerations, and other applications of MUF in post cpv adult and pediatric patients. And results were examined for data points, such as age, weight, blood volume, chest tube drainage, postoperative bleeding, blood transfusion volume, ICU stay, hospital stay, hematocrit, IL-6, IL-8, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and mortality. Adult subjects were over 14 years of age and included those undergoing coronary artery bypass grafting, valve repair or replacement, aortic surgery, and a combination of any of those procedures, while pediatric patients included um, as research subjects were undergoing cardiopulmonary bypass for repair of congenital defects and were under 14 years of age and 45 kilograms. Patients in both experimental groups will have undergone post-CPP AV MUF and studies um, who utilized zero balance or conventional ultrafiltration were excluded from analysis. Also studies including patients who were pregnant and end organ failure, had organ transplantation or were emergently operated on were also excluded from consideration. Studies were evaluated and 17 were selected to be used for data extraction, ranging in publication date from 1992 to 2018 for a total of 1,665 patients analyzed. 
data analysis was separated into two parts, the first focusing on post-operative patient parameters and the second part focusing on the immediate effects of MUF on hematocrit and pro-inflammatory mediators. Data from each of the studies was scrutinized for bias and inconsistency, and when accepted, was organized into an Excel spreadsheet. Data from each study was separated under the author's name, study population, and finally into control and experimental groups. Statistical analysis was utilized to determine the values of mean standard deviation and range of each study parameter for each of the four groups evaluated, and student paired two-tailed t-tests were utilized via the Excel program to evaluate the probability that differences between the values in the studies, uh, study groups were achieved by chance. The calculated p-value was evaluated based on an assumption that a p-value of less than 0.05 demonstrates a rejection of the null hypothesis, in this case being that there is no difference in the modified ultrafiltration and non-modified ultrafiltration control groups in adult and pediatric patients within that measured variable. Evaluation of the analyzed data extractions and their statistical significance when compared was used to determine a conclusive relationship between and among the study populations observed in this retrospective meta-analysis. A total of 10 studies were analyzed in part one of the study, including pediatric and adult patient populations for a total of 1,322 patients. The adult patient population demographics from each study's um, MUF and control groups are summarized in table two. And final analysis for the adults studied of part one are summarized in table three. Um, and the quantity of packed red blood cell blood transfusions was the only variable identified as significantly different between the MUF and control adult patient populations with a p-value of 0.03. Analysis was completed for five pediatric studies comprised of MUF and control groups for a total of 506 subjects with an alpha level um, of less than 0.05, indicating significant significance. No pediatric parameters were identified as significantly different between the muffin control groups, and therefore the null hypothesis must be retained here. A total of eight studies were analyzed in the second part of the study for a total of 345 patients, and the adult patient population demographics from each study's MUF and control groups are summarized in table six, while final analysis for the adult studies demonstrated that hematocrit increase post-MUF was the only variable identified as significantly different between the MUF and control adult patient populations with a p-value of 0.01 displayed in table seven. Analysis was completed for four pediatric studies comprised of MUF and control groups for a total of 140 subjects. However, no pediatric parameters were identified as significantly different between the MUF and control groups, and therefore, again, the null hypothesis must be retained. The concept of MUF was originally utilized to attenuate the effect of therapeutic hemodilution for CPB during cardiac surgery on pediatric and general cardiac surgery patients where um, they depend on high hemoglobin levels for oxygen delivery to avoid cyanosis as a result of their defects. The simplistic design is a basic pore filter that functions by selectively, selectively sieving fluids, metabolites, and molecules that meet the size and polarity requirements to pass through the hemofilter pores. The average hemofilter pore size is 65 kilodaltons, which allows any molecule smaller than that to be sieved out through the ultrafiltrate of the hemoconcentration, hemoconcentrator device utilized in MUF. Despite understanding the function of the hemoconcentrator and how sieving should work, it has been unexpected to discover that not all of the expected molecules are actually removed during modified ultrafiltration. These molecules should have a sieving coefficient of one, where their size allows them to be filtered in the same ratio in which they appear in the blood. However, it's not always the case. Some studies, such as Claridol in 1997, have speculated that binding of certain molecules, including cytokines, to larger proteins like albumin prevent their removal by filtration via the hemoconcentrator. And while cytokines such as TNF-alpha, IL-6, and IL-8 should be removed in the ultrafiltrate because their molecular weights are below the pore size, it doesn't always appear that that is so. 
the respective molecular weights are shown in table 10. And the removal of many electrolytes in plasma water appear to be unhindered by this phenomenon, however. Um, and MUF should then result in an increased hematocrit. So after a complete analysis, a significant difference was found between the MUF and control groups for adult and pediatric hematocrit increase and adult blood transfusion requirements based on an accepted alpha level of 0.05 or less. Comparison of MUF and control groups for both pediatric and adult patient groups analyzed found no significant difference in sample size, respective group ages, 24-hour chest tube drainage, ICU stay, hospital stay, mortality, TNF alpha decrease, IL-6 decrease, and IL-8 decrease, as well as in pediatric blood transfusion requirements. A complete summary of the analyzed studies and their independent results and conclusions are shown in Table 11. These findings suggest that MUF may attenuate some of the dilutional effects created by CPB and reduce the requirement of allergenic blood transfusion, but does not necessarily reduce the systemic inflammatory response mediators that are activated, activated by CPB and their subsequent effect. The hypothesis being evaluated in the study could therefore not be accepted, and the null hypothesis is retained that there is no significant difference in post-op morbidity and mortality based on post post-cardiopulmonary bypass modified ultrafiltration in adult and pediatric cardiac surgery patient populations. The finding of these analyses suggests that while some beneficial hemoconcentrator may, hemoconcentration may be gained from post-CVB MUF, there's no cumulative benefit by pediatric or adult patients that undergo the procedure. Specific indications for secondary effects such as total body water, myocardial edema, inflammatory response activation are not indicated by these results. However, they may just be out of the scope of this analysis. These findings do suggest that beneficial hemoconcentration from MUF procedures may result in decreased blood loss and blood transfusion in the immediate postoperative period for some patients, however, this requires more investigation. Despite an expansive research search of the literature, there are very few recent studies evaluating the effects of post-CVB MUF and even fewer that evaluate its, evaluate its effects in adult patients. All of the studies included in this analysis were single center studies, all of which evaluated either pediatric or adult patients, not both. There also were no studies that evaluated all of the parameters analyzed in this meta-analysis. Most evaluated either physical parameters or biochemical parameters individually. So to accurately depict the non-biased results of post-CPV MUF, fully controlled trials must be completed in pediatric and adult patients within similar conditions of each other. And this type of controlled trial may actually be best displayed in animal studies where the surgical conditions um, are much more highly controlled than in human patients that are often quite sick before undergoing cardiac surgery. There's also less inherent risk to animal models under string these stringent variable conditions than there would be to a human patient undergoing a questionably beneficial elective procedure. Subsequent human studies evaluating post-CBB MUF would be most appropriate in a randomized, multi-centered, blinded trial where the patient parameters and conditions will vary widely. All questionably related patient parameters should also be studied as they relate to MUF, such as hemodynamics, fluid balance, cardiac parameters, pulmonary function, biochemical change, edema, lactate levels, renal function, pharmacological treatment and interactions, and more that are excluded from the scope of this meta-analysis. Furthermore, medical investigation and comparative analysis of various types of ultrafiltration, hemoconcentration, and pharmacological treatments to attenuate um, achieve the same desired result may yield a similar, safer, or more effective means than post-cardiopulmonary modified ultrafiltration procedure. And because protein binding may hinder the removal of cytokines and other pro-inflammatory meters, they should be sieved off to reduce the systemic inflammatory response initiated by the CPV exposure. It's possible that further investigation may show similar benefits of increased hematocrit, resulting in increased oxygen delivery, decreased chest, chest tube drainage and blood transfusion requirement by conventional ultrafiltration during CPV, which may eliminate perfusion-related risk um, compared to MUF procedures. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Is there any questions I can answer?
Thank you very much, Madeline. Great research. I do, we only have time for one question, but I have a question. Are there any results that show indication for differing responses or outcomes for the VV MUF versus the AV MUF? What I could find, um, the, the short answer is no. Basically, because you're treating a total, total blood volume, essentially you should see the same results over time. The VV muff tends to be displayed in research uh, less frequently, which is why I chose to eliminate it from my research pool, um, simply because it allowed me to limit studies um, more specifically also based on cannulation. Um, there are a few studies that even uh, attempted MUF-like procedures in ECMO patients, um, which would present more often in a VV fashion. Um, so in order to help eliminate some of those, um, those studies and those options, um, I chose to eliminate from this study. However, um, you know, anecdotally, no, it appears that the results uh, can be kind of construed either way in VV versus VA MUF. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.